What's up guys? I'm excited today to bring you another video, this time with a Bastiodon replacement, which I've had probably the most trouble replacing out of uh, out of all of the three. That replacement is going to be uh, Melmetal. Uh, so if you had quick eyes, you might have noticed that the team I actually queued up to this first game was not a Melmetal team. I kind of misclicked. So while this runs in the background, there's a couple things I did want to go over. First of all, the criteria from which I've chosen replacements was that if they could take me to the top 100 leaderboards. Uh, but with the way Niantic is uh, deciding to do their ranks, uh, you need 200, over 200 wins to get to rank 9, uh, which is approximately going to be 400 games. And you won't get a rating until then. So with no rating, there's probably no leaderboards. And with can't really be top 100 leaderboards if no leaderboards to be top 100 of in the first place. So I've had to adjust the criteria to be a bit more subjective. If there's reasonable success, uh, and I think that it could potentially be a top 100 team, then I will make the video. And I think Bell Metal did perform well enough such that I could, uh, I could say that it is a reasonable Bastion replacement for someone who might not have Bastion. Of course, it doesn't do what Bastion does. It can't really farm down flyers with its, uh, its fast move, but it does offer heavy rock damage, some electric damage, and uh, some fighting coverage, which is something that Bastiodon really, really lacks. So while, while the video is still rolling, go over the IVs really quick. Shadow Victory Bell IVs are 7, 14, 14. Deoxys Defense IVs are 11, 11, 12. You kind of take what you can get with Deoxys Defense, um, that case. And Melmetal's IVs are 4, 15, 7, I believe. So pretty good IVs, but then again with Melmetal, uh, once you have a Mel Metal, you've caught so many Mel Town, you probably have a good Great League one, anyways. So first game, Haunter, uh, great opening. Have to throw the one shields, and you get through flawlessly. Uh, Deoxys Defense comes in; they try and farm me down, but I'm actually going to get to two Leaf Blades. So they're actually not going to shield, and all that energy goes to waste. As we're on the back, this entire team is weak to to Shadow Victory Bell. Uh, and I'm just going to send out Melmetal here. I don't think it's better at dealing with Azumarill than, than uh, Deoxys Defense. I'm kind of just trying to learn the matchups and see how much damage a Rock Slide does to the Azumarill. Or how much how much damage an Ice Beam or a Hydro Pump does to Melmetal. Because Melmetal is not a Pokemon that really you see that much in Great League. It's, it's a menace in Master League. Uh, it's around in Ultra League a little bit. But in Great League, it hasn't really been seen. Even with the... the the downfall of uh, Registeel, you just don't see it that much. Um, so in that way, you kind of also have a bit of a, a surprise advantage too. It's something they might not expect. Um, in this case, almost take down the Azumarill because it's a player off Ice Beam Azumarill. I think Bastiodon can actually take that down. Whereas Melmetal didn't quite. I also missed a lot of bubbles on, on some of those rock slides. But that game was pretty much over once um, they let their Deoxys Defense and Haunter go down. So... Second game, we have a Scrafty lead. This is pretty good. I wasn't counting fast moves, but it is a power-up punch. And if they throw a power-up punch, they can still not get to a foul play. So that's why I see most craft Scrafties throw a foul play. Uh, just to note here, um, when you see them switch in, you see that Psychic uh, bubble in the top corner over here where my mouse is. Um, it's either going to be a Deoxys or... A hypno probably and if it's a hypno you need to get out with your shadow victory belt so just see it just be aware for when that confusion damage comes through if you see a confusion just swap right out um so in this matchup you're going to see deoxys defense versus azumarill um both of us don't really want to spend shields here and i end up being able to farm down their azumarill and throw the psycho boost off it's not going to do much damage but it's better than nothing and i'm going to swap straight into the mel metal uh, Melmetal versus Hypno. Really depends on Hypno's moves. Fire Punch does a lot of damage. Uh, I didn't shield the first one because you never know. Uh, if you shield the first one, it might be a bait and they might Focus Blast you later. Um, now that I know he has Fire Punch, he's probably not running Focus Blast. I'm fine shielding one. Also, I will faint if I don't. Uh, so Melmetal versus Hypno. I have a shield and I could use it to guarantee this win, but I decide not to because I think for some reason my Shadow Victory Bell has more health than it does and it absolutely does not. Um, that was very close to just losing a game out of pure stupidity, but luckily Shadow Victory Bell pulls through even when I don't. Uh, 
Next match, bro, I guess in the first sets, you'll see a lot of the work is done by Shadow Victory Bell and Deoxys Defense. That's because I just wasn't quite comfortable with uh, Mel Metal yet. So if you are running Deoxys Defense, this is very important to pay attention to. Um, this is how you play the Ezreal matchup. So you throw Thunderbolts until they don't shield one. So in this case, they shield the first one. I'm going to go for another Thunderbolt. Um, I know this is an Ice Beam. If it's an Ice Beam, you can let it through uh, because they did not charge up enough. So I'm going to let the Thunderbolt through and they're going to let it go. And at this point, they're in range of either a Psycho Boost or a Psycho Boost debuffed Thunderbolt. So I'm going to shield this up. It's just an Ice Beam. Uh, but I'm going to go get this Psycho Boost off. They're probably going to shield. Sometimes they don't. That's fine too. Uh, but then I'll get to this Thunderbolt. They no longer have shields. No one expects the debuff Thunderbolt. They know they can live through another Psycho Boost. So that's why they're okay doing that. Uh, but Altaria comes back in. And now it's Altaria versus Melmetal. Uh, they swap into Vigoroth. And I swap into Shadow Victory Bell. I've never actually done the zero shield Shadow Victory Bell versus Vigoroth before. This was very scary for me. Uh, but Shadow Victory Bell, at least with my IVs, Barely gets through, and I get to the Leaf Blade, and now it's just Altaria versus Melmetal. I actually know that Altaria is a decent matchup versus Melmetal if shields are up, um, but shields are down. You can see how much Sky Attack did there. I don't know if I can take another one with all the Dragon Breath damage, but luckily Melmetal charges way faster than Altaria does. Able to get to that next Rock Slide, and the rest is history. Um, but yeah, this is one of those games where if you had Bastion on, you would be able to just farm down that Altaria, regardless of how many shields they have. Whereas Melmetal, you kind of want to play more with shields down than Bastiodon. Uh, kind of like the Galarian Stunfisk, but it's it's not as big of a deal because you charge your moves so fast. Um, so Cresselia versus Shadow Victory Bell, the way I like to play this matchup is to just throw shields at the problem until it, it solves itself. You need two shields to beat Cresselia. You throw the Leaf Blade just to force them to use a shield as well. And they come in with Bastiodon. So this is another matchup uh, that is pretty formulaic. Bastiodon comes in. I'll throw a Thunderbolt. If they let the Thunderbolt through, that means I don't have to shield win the matchup. If they do shield the Thunderbolt, then I have to spend a shield Stone Edge, even though I come out of the matchup with a ton of energy anyways. Uh, so Swampert comes in. I'm just gonna throw Psycho Boost. Uh, Psycho Boost does a ton of damage to Swampert. Swampert is pretty squishy in Great League. So I'm surprised they didn't shield the first one, but they shield the second one. And I go into Melmetal, actually. The Swampert has built up a decent amount of energy. The last thing I want is him somehow one-shotting my Shadow Victory Bell, when I know my Shadow Victory Bell is in a perfect position to be able to KO both this Cresselia and this Swampert without using any shields. So I actually don't need to use the Leaf Blade here. I just did it because I felt a bit scared. And... Shadow Victory Bell is able to take down both those Pokemon flawlessly. Obviously, swapping Melmetal into Swampert is not the usually the ideal play, but identify your MVP. I identified my Melmetal was going to be pretty much worthless, and I just needed to, to get my Shadow Victory Bell back in there without any energy on the opponents. So, uh, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, really tough catching these Pidgeots at the beginning of the season. Uh, Wasting all my golden raspberries and my and my um balls. But yeah. Um yeah, in the first set, not too much Melmetal did that Bastion couldn't do. I would actually say all of those games that were won, all four of them. So Mel Melmetal's now four and four. Uh Vigoroth and Bastion lost that first game. So they're zero and one, Melmetal's four and four, but those matchups, I think, would have been one with Bastion regardless. So, this game is a Lantern lead swapping into Shadow Machamp. Uh, it's a cross shop. You can let it through. You win with very little HP. But if you have that much HP, you can still deal a ton of damage to Lantern. Um, the only matchups I think I would take the cross shop on Shadow Victory Bell is if they already have shown a Lantern or an Azumarill. Uh, because you don't really need HP to deal with them and you save a shield, which could be used on Ice Beam. But this uh, Lantern does farm me down. Lantern's charge moves do hit very hard, so I elect to shield one of them just in case it was a Hydro Pump. And Deoxys Defense, uh, since I just had two shields left. And they go into a Skarmory. So because they go into a Skarmory, I'm a bit confused why they brought the Lantern back into the, um, the Shadow Victory Bell in the first place. They could have just brought the Skarmory in. 
Uh, but that's okay with me. I'll take the free win. Take the free wins as they come, and just finish this this guy off with the Oxus defense. Uh, Bell Metal doesn't even need to show up in this game uh, to win. But Melmetal's positives will be showcased in, in some of the later sets once I kind of throw a little bit of confidence in Melmetal and, uh, and I'm able to use him in a couple more matchups. So another good lead. Swap rank to Galarian Stunfisk. Um, I do shield up the Rock Slide here, even though I know Rock Slide. I just want to stay healthy just for whatever's in the back. If they're swapping to Galarian Stunfisk, this looks like it's going to be a Shadow Victory Bell MVP game. And they actually just let... The Leaf Blade through and go into Alolan Marowak. So the Alolan Marowak matchup here, this is where I really miss Vigoroth. So I have to shield here. I have to shield because if it's a Shadow Ball and the Oxygen Defense faints, my switch timer is nowhere near up. So when I go into the next Pokemon, which is Bastiodon, or sorry, Melmetal in this case, they can just swap right out. And then I have the Azumarill into the Melmetal and the Alolan Marowak into uh, the... Um, Shadow Victory Bell. So that would be no good. Luckily, they swap out of the Alolan Marowak after that. Save them for later. And I'm just trying to faint this Azumarill. Blow as many shields as I can. Do as much damage as I can. Um, and I'm going to go in Melmetal to try and farm down this Azumarill. I need an energy advantage versus this Alolan Marowak. They throw an Ice Beam, luckily for me. And we're going to see how much a Bone Club does. So that's a lot of damage. Melmetal is much squishier than Bastiodon. It's more damage than on a Bastiodon. Um, even though Bastiodon takes four times super effective damage, they realize they're going to have to throw a charge move at me here. Otherwise, I'm going to get to a charge move first. Good job on them for counting. But Shadow Victory Bell is going to come in and just absolutely clean up um, there. But yeah, that just shows Melmetal... With, and shields down is really, really good against Alolan Marowak and can get that energy advantage. Did a ton of damage with that rock slide. Got another rock slide up. Would have KO'd him right away. Uh, which is something Bastion can't really do. It's more of a slow, painful, even matchup. Where you can kind of tank bone clubs. So, in this case, they lead with Altaria and they swap into Preserver. So, a bit of an odd swap for me. Because they... A super effective damage from actually that's metal claw that's not even shadow claw i just realized i did not realize the game so metal claw and iron head instead of shadow claw and foul play so maybe they didn't change their moves since uh using their berserker but either way we both use a shield on and i was already uh deoxys defense was already half hp and still managed to win back switch advantage which is very important when we need to get metal metal lined up with altaria so this is a frost breath lapras too so this guy's moves are just all over the place um i think maybe he's trying a new team and just forgot to tm everything i've done that before but i have no idea what the the energy per turn on on frost breath is uh so i i didn't really know how to play that matchup but ended up spending a shield just to be safe on the surf even though I, I didn't want to have to deal with Melmetal trying to farm down the Lapras with, with Thundershock. That move just does not do very much damage. It's more of, just for the energy gain. So another Azumarill lead. Tons of Azumarill leads. And into a Galarian Stunfisk. I would have thought beginning of the season, ranks like 1 through 4, people would have just been kind of playing whatever Pokemon they want. You know, just trying to experiment around, have some fun. Like I'm trying to Melmetal now. But there's been a lot of a lot more Azumarill leads than than normal, which is interesting. In comes Shadow Mawal. So... I don't know if you guys have uh, seen my previous teams, but Shadow Mawile has absolutely annihilated them. There's been games where Shadow Mawile has defeated all three of my Pokemon by itself. Um, so seeing this come out even after a favorable lead is is not very good. And they uh, decide to save their Shadow Mawile from Deoxys Defense. Save him for later and now lock in Deoxys Defense with Esmeralda. I go for Psycho Boost. Because I think I can get a shield and then I'll swap out going to Shadow Victory Bell. Fortunately, my Shadow Victory Bell is so low. Um, I end up having to go into Mel Metal instead. Um, I don't shield and it's an Ice Beam. Uh, that would have been very bad. I think that was my only win condition is calling a bait. If they just went for a Hydro Pump, uh, I don't think I can win anymore. So I know this is a Power Up Punch, but I have to shield anyways. My win condition, I have to take out this Shadow Mawile. I get to the superpower. So this is something Bastion can't do. There's no burst from Bastion into Shadow Mawile. Um, takes forever to charge up to a flamethrower. 
So being able to get that superpower off on a shieldless Shadow Mawile actually saved the game. I think this is one of those games where um, Melmetal kind of proved its worth. I don't think I win that game with uh, with Bastion on. Next game we have Glaren Sunfisk lead. Um, I think this game is an example of why this is very IV dependent, this matchup. So I let the rock slide through because I know it's a rock slide. And it goes for a second rock slide and I decide to shield even though I'm very low. And he actually beats me in the farm down. So this has only happened twice in maybe like 50 games. So I wonder what IVs this guy is running. It's like a high attack spread or a high defense spread that really allows uh, Byron Stumpfist could, to do that. And now with switch advantage and against my team with, and I don't have a shield advantage, uh, this game is going to be very rough. Toxic Croak does not even have to shield a single rock slide from Melmetal, just farms Melmetal all the way down. A shield expecting a sludge bomb, it's not. So I've not been doing a very good job at, at uh, calling baits for the most part today. Now I take the sludge bomb and the game is over. Galvantula comes in and we're going to see the new move added to the game, um, which Galvantula has access to. Lunge is an icy wind clone. I expect this Pokemon and actually this move just to, to see quite a bit of uh, an increase in play because it is a... Icy Wind is a very good move, and a Bug-type Icy Wind in Great League, which is filled with Dark and Psychic types, is a godsend. And Electric is a kind of a forgotten type as well. It's uh, really good against a lot of the meta. It really just held by, back by Galarian Stunfisk. So if you can line up your Galvantula, either as a lead or a closer, I think that it does have a lot of potential. This maybe something I want to play around with. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. All right. So the first Mirror Match, this is uh, a showcase on why IVs are important. Look at his CP, 1500, mine's 1498, but yet his health is in the yellow and mine is not. Uh, I only threw the charge move because I knew that I could win even if I threw the charge move. Normally I would just farm all the way down so that I wouldn't lose fast moves, but even if I drop two fast moves there, I would still beat that out of Victory Bell. So this is the, the typical matchup. Bastiodon versus Deoxys Defense, as I discussed earlier, throw the Thunderbolt so you don't have to shield. And they're running my uh, standard comp of Shadow Victory Bell, Deoxys Defense, and Bastiodon. And I think they kind of misplayed it a little bit by sw swapping into the Bastiodon right away. You should swap into the Deoxys Defense because usually teams don't have, or Shadow Victory Bell teams don't have a good answer for it, so they'll have to swap their own Deoxys Defense into it. Um... But at the end, we're, we're actually going to come down to Deoxys Defense versus Melmetal matchup. And this Deoxys Defense has a lot of energy. So they're going to throw a Thunderbolt, which I shield. And they have another Charge Boost, so I'm expecting a Psycho Boost. But it's in fact a Rock Slide, so I'm not sure why they decided to Rock Slide. Um, I'm going to get to a Rock Slide before they get to another Charge Move. But perhaps a Thunderbolt would have, another Thunderbolt would have been enough to KO Melmetal. Um, and perhaps win them the game. The other thing is maybe uh, Shadow Victory Bell, I think, was one Razor Leaf away from a Leaf Blade. So I might have been able to get that Leaf Blade off anyways. It would have been very close. Uh, next matchup, we have a Sableye lead. This is very favorable for Shadow Victory Bell. Throw one shield at the problem and it goes away. Uh, and you'll have a full Leaf Blade to come onto the next Pokemon. But that is a Skarmory. So rule of thumb, generally I throw Leaf Blade at any Pokemon that comes in, unless it's four times res resisted. Leaf Blade is just so powerful. So we're going to see the Azumarill Deoxys Defense matchup. Again, I don't shield at all because I don't need Deoxys Defense to win this Azumarill matchup. I, there's no switch advantage anymore. They're, they're already down a Pokemon. Um, I'm just trying to get as much damage off, burn as many shields as I can, take as much energy as I can. So now I can swap back into Shadow Victory Belt up this Azumarill and they're going to swap right back into Skarmory. Good play by them. They catch the Leaf Blade. Does almost no damage and I'm going to swap into Melmetal and this isn't the way you should normally play this. You should charge up against Skarmory just in case it does have something like Brave Bird where it debuffs itself. Then I would only need one Rock Slide to faint it. Instead I need two now. Um, yeah. 
if you're if you're against something that debuffs just charge up as much as you can first uh but they elect to forfeit there as no shields remaining on them i have a loaded mel metal and a shield remaining to kind of shield up whatever skarmory wants to throw so that's another big advantage of mel metal over bastion is you don't have to be worried about what moves the skarmory has there's no flash cannon threat as you resist flash cannon unlike uh Bastion. All right, so this game, Stunfisk into Shadow Fortress. So unfortunately, during this game, I saw the steel pop up in the top right corner, and I swapped immediately into Deoxys Defense. I did not realize that it was a Shadow Fortress, and this swap was incredibly bad. Do not win this matchup. They didn't shield. I shielded because I thought I could win back switch advantage. So I'm down shield, and I'm down switch advantage now. Then Melmetal gets a Thundershock off, um, but... In the back they have shadow machamp so now this team is in a bit of trouble not a victory bell very good against shadow machamp when you have enough health uh, i'm gonna throw a rock slide kind of burn a shield but at this point i know i'm uh i'm pretty much done i don't shield i just let no metal go down and this this loss kind of hurts because it was pretty much completely my fault from going into uh into the Deoxys defense in the first place. I think that was my first loss with uh, with the Melmetal lineup. Uh, completely my fault. Or maybe it was the second loss. Okay, so they swap into Razor Leaf Tropius here. I, I could have gone into Melmetal, which is, again, a better matchup uh, than Bastion, just because you resist the grass moves as well. But they let me charge up to a Sludge Bomb, and I get the Sludge Bomb off instead. So most Tropius players, if... It's a swap, and they think I'm just. They might think I'm just going to acid spray so that my Bastiodon can just farm them down faster. Uh, so I would say about 50% of the time, Tropius don't shield Sludge Bomb, and that's why I run Sludge Bomb, is for Tropius and for Azumarill. So as you can see, because of that, this game is pretty much won. If, uh, if you just eliminate their Tropius with, with your Shadow Victory Roll, there's no issues. So. Now we have Azumarill with two shields versus Deoxys Defense and Melmetal with one shield. I decided to let the charge move on Melmetal go because I assumed it was going to be a bait, uh, but it was a Hydro Pump. And then now they bait me with the Ice Beam. So they've done their absolute best to try and get back a switch advantage. Um, you can see I'm throwing a counter in between those first two Psycho Boosts just to, so they don't get an extra bubble in. And this last Psycho Boost is my win condition, so I don't counter before it because i know as long as i get that off the game is so well played on the baiting side uh to, to my opponent unfortunate that he did not call the sludge bomb otherwise that matchup would have been completely different all right so scrafty lead um once again does good against everything in the back jirachi comes in um jirachi's not a pokemon you see very often i honestly think jirachi is very strong uh but deoxys defense a decent matchup against it you kind of you control the matchup with shields like you can force the win if you really want to so i'm going to shield up doom desire uh these confusions are kind of hurting but these counters are hurting a little bit more and i'm winning the race by a little bit uh but i don't want them to get to another doom desire so i throw psycho boost they get to the doom desire i decide i want switch advantage more than anything and shields are down so the game lags a little bit here um but i guess i've gotten to the psycho boost already and it kind of like high or something and Jirachi's very low. It's not going to get to another move. So with shields down, they come in with Bastiodon. And now I know they have Bastiodon and Scrafty left. Uh, you can see how much a Thunderbolt with four times reduction does there. But my Melmetal comes in and they swap to Scrafty. And I can't have Scrafty dealing too much counter damage to me. But guess what? Super power, super effect against Scrafty. Uh, Shadow Victory Bell comes in and takes down Scrafty. And that is all because of the superpower. If you don't have that superpower damage, Scrafty gets to a foul play and one shots the Shadow Victory Bell. Unfortunately, Bastiodon is really tanky and, and can kind of race Shadow Victory Bell. And we'll have a charge move there. And he actually gets to the Flamethrower. And you can see how much damage that Flamethrower does um, before I get to my charge move. But the superpower is enough to take him down in the end. So this is a matchup where I don't think Bastiodon could have won. But having Melmetal... Uh, versus a dark and a steel type at the end it was absolutely fantastic that's something that Bastiodon could never dream of doing as soon as the scrafty comes in 
and uh, Victory Bell comes back in and gets foul played, that game is over. But instead, because you have that threat of superpower from the Mel Metal, you can turn that game around. And a lot of people will be expecting the Bastion on in the background too, so... Uh, that surprise factor is, is kind of important. Alright, I think this is the last set. So maybe the last set or second last set. Um, I did have to cut out one of the battles just because the opponent lagged out and I had to pretty much farm them down for two minutes and I don't think anybody wants to watch that. Um, so in this case, farm the Haunter down, they come with Toxicroak. Toxicroak, very deadly against the, the Vigoroth team. Uh, luckily, they let the Leaf Blade through, so there's a lot less damage I have to do. And they come with the Esmeral, so it's a pretty fam familiar scenario we've seen before. Esmeral with two shields versus Melmetal and Deoxys Defense with only one shield. I throw the Thunderbolt and swap out because I realize that Deoxys Defense is my MVP here. He's the one who can deal with the Toxic Croak that's still alive as well. Um... So Melmetal is kind of just here to absorb the energy. So Hydro Pump and Ice Beam on Melmetal. We've got a Rock Slide off as well, Burning Shield. So job well done. Luckily, they come back in with Toxic Croak because I had no idea how I was going to end up playing that. Uh, instead, they have one shield left. I have Psycho Boost, and I can get to a Thunderbolt here or they can get to another charge move. But instead, I decide to press the Psycho Boost button as I think KO them. But it doesn't, and I end up having to spend two more counters anyways, which would have put me well past Thunderbolt energy requirements. Um, but yeah, Bell Metal once again doing its job. Uh, Bastion would have performed similarly there. And we're going to see a Swampert lead. I saw a lot of Swampert leads uh, on this day. I don't know if there's a, another YouTuber with a, a team out there. And here we have the classic... Registeel, Deoxys Defense matchup. Registeel I still think is very strong. The only reason I'm using Mel Metal over it is because I don't really have a Registeel or a good enough Registeel. Um, the way this matchup goes, throw the Thunderbolt just so that you have to spend one less shield. If, you, if they shield the Thunderbolt, you have to spend two shields. If they don't, then you only have to spend one. So uh, either way, if they shield the Thunderbolt, it's probably good for this team because then Mel Metal is better with no shields. I'm not sure why... They swap into the Skarmory here. After I've already revealed, I have Thunderbolt. Um, but they burn both their shields, farming down the Ox of Defense. I know they probably got Brave Bird. There's no reason Skarm for Skarmory to farm up that much unless they have Brave Bird. And I let it through just because I want to see how much damage it does. Uh, which is about half. No metal. Uh, you can notice I had enough for Leaf Blade, but I didn't throw it. This is because if I throw the Leaf Blade, Skarmory is much less likely to throw their energy. So... I want them to throw their energy because their only win condition is landing two Brave Birds on Melmetal. And they needed one more Brave Bird and I had one more shield. So I didn't want them going to that matchup with any energy. So that was a tactical, not tactical non-spending of energy. So in this case, we actually have a Shadow Swampert. So this is probably the fastest you'll ever see a Pokemon faint. Um, they take over half health in just two Razor Leafs and they swap into Skarmory and Melmetal wants this matchup. So as you can see, I've learned, I'm playing this matchup better now. I charge up, waited for them to throw a charge move. It wasn't Brave Bird, so I realized I can kind of throw rock slides and either force a shield or, or get the KO before they get to another charge move. When they elect to let Skarmory go down, I'm able to get to a superpower and they let it through. So Melmetal taking out two Pokemon on his own pretty much. Uh, Two shields up for each team, Registeel versus Deoxys Defense. Uh, my opponent is smart, they know when they're done. Alright, so this matchup, very favorable. Once again, they swap into Umbreon. So generally, I would swap into Bastiodon here. I'm really unsure about the Melmetal matchup, because I don't know how much damage the Superpower does to Umbre or Umbreon. So I throw a Leaf Blade, and I'm ready to swap to... Metal, but they let it through. So because they let it through, I'm fine just spending that extra shield um, and making sure this Umbreon goes down with the, an extremely healthy Victory Bell. And they're going to come in with Cresselia. So thank God it's not Confusion Cresselia, just Psycho Cut Cresselia. Um, I swap into Melmetal here, and they swap into Shadow Machamp. So I knew this was going to happen, but my goal here is to kind of just remove shields and force 
the Shadow Machamp out so that I can KO it with Shadow Victory Bell. So because he threw energy for cross drop, I think he got CMP tied. Power. I'm able to charge up barely to a Leaf Blade, finish off this Cresselia. I think even if I don't get to the Leaf Blade, Deoxys Defense, the matchup versus Cresselia, unless they get a, a Moonblast debuff, is, is pretty even. So I think I would have been able to uh, win that matchup anyways, but nice to have that little bit of uh, insurance room for sure. So uh, yet again, another win from the Melmetal. Actually, that's the, the fifth win of this set. And I think the last set. Um, so 17 out of 19 total wins. I felt like that was good enough for Melmetal to kind of proven that it is an acceptable Bastion on replacement. The team plays a bit differently than Bastion on lineup, but not too much. It's it's much more similar than the, the Galarian Stunfisk version. Um, and it does provide some unique coverage versus if you get stuck with, against a Steel type or a Dark type at the end, uh, which is maybe something that might happen more often with a Vigoroth safe switch. Um, because Deoxys Defense is baiting out all the Dark types. There's not going to be a Dark type left at the end unless they have two Darks. So, uh, yeah, Melmetal might be better paired with a different safe switch, but as you can see, 17, 17 out of 19 wins. Uh, not too shabby. Works perfectly fine with Deoxys Defense. Um, but yeah, as usual, if you uh, like this content, then uh, throw me a like. Feel free to comment uh, on anything. Let me know if the audio is working well. I just started trying some new audio stuff. Um, not really sure how well it's working. And um, in the future, I'll, I'll be continuing more videos uh, along this same line. And then I'll be branching out with other lines once I'm done this little project as well. So if you want to keep up to date with some really useful well playing lines some lines that can take you to the top 100 with a, a little bit of good play then feel free to hit that subscribe button as well and as always thank you for watching guys